The Department of Homeland Security, Customs and Border Protection is committed to gaining operational control of our nation's borders. To achieve this goal, one of our enforcement priorities is denying smugglers the use of commercial vehicles as a means to transport undocumented aliens and contraband into the United States. As part of the transportation industry, you've likely become familiar with United States Border Patrol traffic checkpoints. It's the policy of U.S. Customs and Border Protection to use Border Patrol checkpoints to restrict the routes of passage from the border area, creating additional deterrence to the initial illegal entry. Checkpoints greatly enhance the Border Patrol's ability to carry out the national objectives of the Border Patrol, which are to apprehend terrorists and terrorist weapons illegally entering the U.S., to deter illegal entries through improved enforcement, to detect, apprehend, and deter smugglers of humans, drugs, and other contraband, to use smart border technology, and to reduce crime in border communities, improving the quality of life. The U.S. Border Patrol has strategically placed immigration traffic checkpoints on all highways leading north, which are located within 100 air miles of the U.S.-Mexican border. The objective of the Texas Hold'em initiative is to reduce the smuggling of undocumented aliens and contraband in tractor trailers through increased community awareness of smuggling penalties and an enhanced partnership with the Department of Public Safety to disqualify smugglers from commercial driver's license use. This training is part of a public outreach campaign which aims to share valuable information with you, the transportation industry. The Texas Hold'em initiative began in Laredo, Texas, which is located on Interstate 35, the primary trade route connecting Canada, the United States, and Mexico. There is a common misconception within the transportation industry that smuggling is a relatively minor crime with minimal penalties, but in reality, it is a felony to knowingly transport undocumented aliens or narcotics. So what do alien smuggling and drug trafficking organizations do when they want you to smuggle for them? They may approach you at a truck stop, a parking lot, or any number of locations near the southern border of the United States. They may entice you to smuggle by offering large amounts of cash, drugs, or prostitutes. Smugglers know the risks and penalties involved in transporting aliens or narcotics and will not take that risk themselves. How does Border Patrol enforcement affect you as a truck driver? Drivers arrested with aliens or narcotics will be detained and interviewed while case paperwork is completed. Drivers will then be processed through the court system and will receive due process. If the court finds the subject guilty, the defendant will be issued a formal notice of conviction. Once convicted, a DIC-17 will be completed and sent to the Department of Public Safety for CDL disqualification. The charge principally used in these cases is 8 U.S.C. 1324-A1-A2, which defines transporting as any person who knowingly transports illegal aliens in furtherance into the United States. There are two types of smuggling, nonprofit and profit. Nonprofit smuggling is one in which no money is gained and the driver is generally smuggling family members or associates. This crime carries a sentence of up to five years imprisonment. Profit smuggling is when there is monetary gain. The sentence ranges higher in these cases with a possibility of up to 10 years imprisonment. Drivers who cause serious bodily harm to another individual during the course of smuggling can face penalties of up to 30 years imprisonment. Drivers who cause the death of an alien or others will be subject to penalties ranging from life in prison to the death penalty. Additionally, a fine of $250,000 and the seizure of the commercial conveyance applied to all four instances of alien smuggling. What crimes under Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration regulations will disqualify you from your commercial driver's license through the Texas Hold'em Initiative? The statutes are found in the FMCSA Handbook Section 1572.103 and include, but are not limited to, smuggling, immigration violations, distribution of, possession with the intent to distribute, or importation of a controlled substance. Under the Texas Transportation Code, Subchapter HD, for crimes that are committed in the state of Texas, a person is disqualified from driving a commercial motor vehicle for life if that person uses a motor vehicle in the commission of a felony involving the manufacture, distribution, or dispensing of a controlled substance, possession with the intent to manufacture, distribute, or dispense a controlled substance, and if the person uses a motor vehicle in the commission of an offense under 8 U.S.C. 1324 that involves the transportation, concealment, or harboring of an alien. So just how will smuggling affect you? Smuggling has affected many citizens within the transportation industry. Vehicles involved in smuggling activity may be subject to seizure. Subjects involved in smuggling activities may be detained throughout the investigation. And vehicles involved in smuggling activities may be towed and impounded by a third party at the owner's expense. 
Let's take a look at the different kinds of smuggling cases the Border Patrol faces on a daily basis. This segment of the training will highlight the reasons why pre-departure self-checks are so important for drivers in the transportation industry and will demonstrate the lengths to which alien and narcotic smuggling organizations will go to smuggle their contraband. First, let's take a look at marijuana. The most common contraband drug trafficking organizations, or DTOs, try to smuggle into the United States. Marijuana may be wrapped in large or small bundles. The marijuana is often concealed in plastic packing wrap, packaging tape, trash bags, burlap sacks, suitcases, or duffel bags. Sometimes the narcotics are concealed within the commodity or will be covered with tar, coffee, or other chemicals to try to mask their distinctive odor. Smuggling organizations will exploit anyone that gives in to their recruiting tactics. Age, race, and sex don't play a part in the smuggler's choice when selecting a driver, since anyone who would drive for them would be a good recruit. Even if you're not from the border region, you should become familiar with your work area and your conveyance. This image of an elderly lady intercepted at a port of entry demonstrates the complete disregard DTOs have for human rights and their use of extreme smuggling tactics. Men and women, young and old, and from every cultural background should be aware of smuggling issues along the southwest border region of the federal and state motor carrier regulations and know there is a zero tolerance policy for smuggling in today's American transportation industry. Since June 2008, when the Texas Hold'em initiative began, men and women have been sitting through trainings just like today's, yet some drivers still choose to smuggle. Money has convinced many of them to smuggle, even after hearing about the life-altering consequences. In all of these cases, the drivers never enjoyed a penny of their much-anticipated payoff, since all currency is seized by the U.S. government. We recommend drivers always check their seals and bills of lading, verifying that all information is correct. Trailer length and weight are important factors when trying to pinpoint any discrepancies during your daily duties. An empty trailer that weighs in heavier than normal should serve as an indicator of something suspicious. You work day in and day out with your commercial vehicle equipment, and it's recommended you become familiar with the standard weights and lengths of your vehicles. A lot of companies we visit with even mandate drivers to provide a padlock for the trailer when it's traveling empty to ensure it's not tampered with in transit or during driver breaks. A 53-foot dry van trailer that's not holding an entire load due to missing floor space should serve as a possible indicator of a false wall compartment. When drivers perform their pre-departure security self-checks, we also recommend inspecting all toolboxes, external storage areas, and external wind jammer openings for signs of intruders. These pictures show examples of how illegal aliens can position themselves in the wind jammer area above the cab. It may be difficult to see into the wind jammer prior to departure, but signs of an intruder should be easy to recognize. Look to see if there are footprints, smudges, or other types of marks left behind from people climbing into the wind jammer. Illegal aliens may also climb into less expected areas, like toolboxes and side cab compartments if left unlocked. Remember always to lock all doors before leaving your cab unattended. When leaving your truck to take a break, even if only for a few moments, it's highly recommended you always lock the cabin doors to protect your vehicle from intruders. The inside cabin of your truck offers many hiding spots for unwelcome passengers or contraband. Prior to departure, be sure to check closets, storage compartments, cabinets, underbed storage, and bunk bed areas. Items out of place or missing items could be indicators someone has entered your truck cab and placed an item or people inside. In this case, we ask you to consider, what would have happened to the subjects if the driver needed to brake suddenly? The subjects would likely have been killed under the pressure of the shifting load. The driver would have faced life in prison up to the death penalty had the aliens died while under his care. In this instance, the smuggler had no regard for the infant's safety. The child was not placed in any safety restraining device. This subject was being smuggled in the rear section of the trailer, and she was eight months pregnant. She was lying down in the hottest portion of the trailer and could only hold on to the top frame. Take a look at this underbed storage area. We ask you today, what types of chemicals and solvents do you keep in that storage area? Those solvents, if inhaled, could cause serious bodily harm to any person hiding in the underbed compartment. The driver, as you learned today, could face up to 20 years in federal prison for causing serious bodily harm to another. Another important factor in this case is the age of the girls shown. 
You as drivers should now pause to think about the smuggler's intentions. Could this child possibly be part of the sex trafficking or child pornography trades? Could this child have possibly been kidnapped? Our partnership with the Texas Department of Transportation led to the donation of two highway signs, which have been placed at the U.S. Border Patrol checkpoints located on Interstate 35 and U.S. Highway 83. The signs display the number of CDLs disqualified to date since the Texas Hold'em initiative began in June 2008. Remember, don't become a number. DHS encourages all citizens to report suspicious activity to local law enforcement or 911. To learn more about the Texas Hold'em initiative, visit the Texas Department of Public Safety website.